Good morning, folks. You are watching coronal plasma dance up into the incoming northern polar crown. We've got space weather, earth weather, and top science news starting at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star very quiet. That plasma motion we saw to start was about as active as it gets. We've had coronal holes spewing faster solar wind, however, and so let's quickly review the character of those coronal hole streams. Due to their faster and more energetic emission, they will actually catch up to slower solar wind put out ahead of them, pushing it, compressing it, bunching it up like snow on a shovel blade, changing the interplanetary magnetic fields as Earth is hit with a new magnetic sector of the solar wind as well, and plasma speed begins to rise as the faster stream actually arrives. Yesterday evening, we saw a spike in the solar wind density, and the magnetism of the stream reversed immediately. That would be the bunching up and magnetism reversal of the interplanetary fields. This led to a slower rise in plasma speed as the coronal hole stream did set in, but it never cracked 450 kilometers per second, so geomagnetic conditions never got out of the green. We want to note a sun-diving comet visible on Soho Lasco C3. This intruder is not expected to survive close approach and may not make it much into the C2 frame. Come back tomorrow for her final moments. We're going to weather where South Africa and Uganda have both suffered amazing rains and flooding. Many children are missing, 33 people confirmed dead at least, and the homes continue collapsing from the damage. Time to head to space and then come back down to Earth. Starting at the Galactic Center with many of the radioscopes teaming up to bring us a beautiful and question-inspiring radio image of the middle of the Milky Way. So they're just not going to mention the giant O in space, big enough to encapsulate the entire galactic nucleus. All right, let's come to 70K for 67P. Link is provided below to pretty much every Rosetta shot you could ever ask for. But the shot I'm fascinated with this morning was taken by Insight on Mars. We've known about Mars quakes for a long time, but this is the first one ever detected as it happened. The sensors are fine-tuned enough to pick up wind and robotic movements, and caught what they say is likely a quake on the red planet. Let's come back almost down to Earth. We're stuck about 150 miles up, above the much brighter and well-known green aurora to the fainter and spectrally shifting lower energy aurora in the upper parts of the atmosphere that is able to excite and move around the tenuous atmosphere at that altitude and make speed bumps for satellites, which are not built for speed bumps. Lastly, folks, Climate.gov decided that with all their El Nino discussion, they better also address the bigger concern for the Northern Hemisphere and the Americas especially, the PNA, Pacific North American Pattern. The article starts off by saying this is the critical mode you've never heard of, and that would be true unless you were talking to an observer or a solar physicist, because we all know darn well that the sun controls it. It is one of the critical factors we address in our textbook, and here are just a few of the papers showing that space weather folks don't just know about the PNA, we understand it, can predict it, unless you work for the IPCC or U.S. government, in which case you cannot. Folks, the only place to get Weatherman's Guide to the Sun is otf.cells.com. It is described as the most awesome book they've got in class and the easiest of their collegiate textbooks to read and understand. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 425 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.